Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we are going to look at and tackle one of the most difficult questions that have plagued our society for the last couple hundred years. It's a difficult question to answer for certain, but we are going to do it. And so here's the question. Which are you, half full or half empty? How do you see the glass? Well, I've got to admit that I am a half empty type of guy. I don't exactly know where it comes from. I don't know if it's inborn in me, if it's genetic or hormonal or what caused it. Maybe it's nurture. Maybe I saw this in somebody I idolized, my father, a brother, a teacher. I don't know. The truth is, I don't even know if this is something that needs to be corrected or not. Maybe I need professional help. But the truth is, I am a pessimist. More often than not, I look to the absolute worst so that when the worst happens, I'm not devastated and disappointed. Well, these are the type of thoughts that run through my head as I read scripture. And you know, as I read scripture, I notice that there are lots of people who fall on either side of this equation. There are lots of people who are half empty people like me. The first one that comes to mind is probably Moses. Now, of course, we don't know this for certain, but you think about Moses and his life and his ministry. God calls him at the burning bush and he doesn't want to go. He doesn't think he speaks very well. He gets scared in front of people. He comes down off of Mount Sinai and he's so frustrated that he destroys the Ten Commandments. And then we know that there's at least one time in his ministry that the people of Israel were griping and complaining so badly, he asked for the Lord to take his life. I would categorize that as half empty. There are others. You think about King Solomon with his famous line, all is vanity. That's half empty. You think of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, and many of the doom and gloom prophets of the Old Testament. I think they would fall in line right with me. But of course, there are others in scriptures who are certainly half full type people. King David pops to mind first and foremost. It didn't matter that he was a short nothing facing a nine foot Goliath. He had confidence and hope. When he was on the run, being hunted by King Saul again, he tended to look to the brighter side of things. Of course, I believe that Jesus and St. Paul were both half full type of guys. It didn't matter what they were facing, whether persecution or beatings. They always looked to the hope that was to come. Which brings us to our epistle reading for today. What do you think St. John is? Is he a half empty or a half full type of guy? In our epistle reading for today, we are looking once more at the book of Revelation. And today is literally the last of that. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter. It is the last Sunday of this season. Our reading is the last we will have from the book of Revelation. And our reading is the very last words of Scripture. There is one more verse after our reading where St. John gives a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. And that's the end of the book. Now since it is Easter we have been looking at the vision of what is to come. But that certainly isn't all of Revelation. What we have sort of skipped over 
are all the doom and gloom passages. The beasts and the serpents, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the bowls of wrath and destruction. Sort of we've glossed over all of that and really haven't looked at it. But it's not as though those sections are unimportant. Because they most certainly are. They're important because those sections describe what we are living through. You see, ever since the ascension, we are living in the last days. And the persecution that the church is enduring today is just as bad as it has ever been. Think about our society for just a moment. Our society tends to think the things that are good or right and it twists them and says they're bad. It takes what is good and says it's wrong. It takes virtues like life and marriage and monogamy. And it holds them up and it says these things are antiquated. They're out of date, they're unobtainable, and probably even undesirable. And then our society takes just the opposite, the very immoral things. Abortion, homosexuality, murder, divorce. Of course, the latest issue is the blurring of the bathroom lines. It takes all these things and it holds them up and says, this is what is good and right. As I've told you before, over the last 100 years, there have been more Christians martyred for the faith than in the previous 1900 years combined. We are living in the last days. The same trials and tribulation that St. John endured through the persecutions of Nero and Domitian. But of course, that's not what we've been focusing on. It's Easter. And so we have been focusing on the hope that is to come because of the resurrection of Jesus. If you remember a few weeks ago, we looked at this picture of the throne room of God. And as we looked out, we saw the angels and the archangels, the elders, the four living creatures, and eventually all of creation bowing down to worship the Lord. Later, we looked again and we saw this time the church triumphant. The saints who have finished their course in faith, resting in the presence of God as he shelters them and wipes every tear away from their eye. We saw another vision, the very end of the world, where Satan and death and pain and suffering are forever cast into the outer darkness. And then Jesus boldly declares, Behold, I make all things new. Last week, we got the vision of the new Jerusalem, a city so beautiful, a city so large and immense that his description literally defies language. And then today, almost added As a highlight to everything else, we get one last vision. St. John looks again, and this time, he sees the river of life flowing out from the throne of God. It is as clean and as clear as crystal. And on either side is the tree of life bearing its fruits year-round with its leaves used for the healing of the nations. In other words, there is no hunger. There is no thirst. There is no want, no pain, no suffering, no war. There is only life abundant in God's presence. 
And he will shelter us with his presence and his glory and his light. And we will rest in his glory forever. And then right towards the end, Jesus speaks up one more time. He says, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. And then with a plead, St. John chimes in and says, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And that's the phrase that caught me. Come, Lord Jesus. As you look back over the book of Revelation, and not just the nice passages that we have highlighted, but the whole book, Does St. John utter these words because he's half empty or half full? Is he looking to the pain and the persecution that the early church is enduring? And make no mistake that as bad as things are now, they were bad then too. As the young and fledgling church was literally hunted by Emperor Domitian. Or is he looking to the future? Is he half full? Have things on this world gotten so bad that he just looks past it to the glory that is to come? Truth is, I don't know. I'm not sure where to put him, to be quite honest. And in fact, maybe it's not either or. Maybe the problem and the pains of this life are pushing him to look towards the next. But here's the real deal. Because the more I think about it, the more I study, the more I come to realize that it's not an either or, black and white, half empty, half full situation. As John describes it, there are certainly trials and tribulations and temptations in this life. And every single one of you knows what that is like. All of us have been caught between a rock and a hard place where there isn't a good decision to be made. And the best thing we can hope for is come, Lord Jesus. We've been there. Some decisions are just gray. And yet here's the deal. Even in those times, Jesus is already here. He isn't just waiting for us in the new Jerusalem. He didn't just secure our eternal glory and then he's sitting there saying, come on. It's ready when you get here. He is here for you right now. You know, just 10 days after his ascension, he promised that the Holy Spirit would come. And on Pentecost, the very celebration that we will have next week, that Holy Spirit came to his people. And that same Holy Spirit is here Comforting you and me. Jesus leads us through his word. The word read. The word spoken. The word meditated on. He is here for you. He strengthens you with his own body and blood through holy communion. And he uplifts you with the fellowship of the saints. His body, the church here on earth. And so the truth is, there is no place, no time, no situation that you can dream of where you aren't surrounded by the love and the comfort of Jesus Christ. It is not an either or, a black or white, a half empty or half full situation. Because with Jesus, the glass is always full. You know, as I started studying this this past week, that phrase, come Lord Jesus, it reminded me 
of the petition that we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come. And if you go back to the catechism and you look up Luther's explanation for that, he says the kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. That seems to fit. Because the truth is, Jesus is already here for you. No matter what trial, what temptation, what struggles you are enduring, Jesus is already here, loving you, comforting you, strengthening you. And so with St. John, we simply plead, come, Lord Jesus, come to me. I'm a half-empty type of guy. It's just who I am. Truth is, though, it's really not as bad as it sounds. I try to live by the old words of wisdom that I expect the best but prepare for the worst. I don't always get it right, but that's what I try to do. And yet the truth is, regardless of how bad things may seem, how hopeless and depressing events may be, we are never alone. It is not either or. It is not black or white. Because half empty, half full when it comes to Jesus is a false choice. Because with Jesus, the glass is always full. And he is here for you today. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord and our Savior. Amen.